The third part is the salvation from sin and everlasting consolation. You remember what my, uh, Matthew one twenty one says, He shall save the people from their sins. And at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 16, where we learn also the power of God and, and Christ through this message that He would bring to all people. Here we read, Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself, and even God our Father, notice how they're put together, as they should be, which hath loved us, hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. So there's no reason that we can't have it just like Simeon had. There's no reason we can't have it like Anna had. It. It's no reason we can't have it like Israel had it. And the same consolation that the shepherds had, and the Magi had, and even those who accepted him for what he taught. Note Simeon's main thoughts. All of God's salvation is for all of God's people. In verse 31, it says, Who has prepared for the face of all people. Now, some of you may have thought that the Old Testament wasn't concerned about Gentiles, but it was. If you read Psalm 50, it says, Praise the Lord everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Wouldn't that include the Gentiles? It surely would. And God has always wanted all people to know about the one God. The problem is, when the Jewish nation was formed, almost everyone believed in false gods. A God here, a God there, this God, that God. God's everywhere, but all false gods. And Paul says in Corinthians, there are no such gods. There's only one God, one Jehovah. But you see, that was the first thing that Simeon did. Uh, here is now coming the end of, of polytheism. Here comes the beginning of monotheism. A light to the Gentiles. Verse 32. A light to the Gentiles and a glory of thy people Israel. You see, Israel could have done so much, but they didn't. Isn't it amazing that after the first century, it seems like Jewish Christians kind of fade in the background, and all of a sudden it's the Gentiles that have become the Christians, not the Jews. And look around at the world today. From a racial standpoint, and remember, God doesn't see us as races anymore. That middle wall of partition has been broken down according to Ephesians chapter 2, and thank God, or else none of us can be saved. Thank God God doesn't see that way today. But remember, this glory of Israel could have been so much, but after the first century, it seems the Gentiles are the ones that respond. And today, as you look around, there are not many of that race called Jews that have responded to the, the law of Christ. They could, they should. We wish that they would. All of our best wishes are for them. Paul said, brethren, my heart's desire for Israel is that they may be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. He says, but I bear the witness that they what? They have basically ignored God's law. And they've set about to establish their own righteousness. This was not right. Thirdly, he has set for the fall and rise of Israel. Now, Israel was going to fall. It didn't know it yet, but it would, didn't it? When the Romans would destroy their nation some 40 years later. And of course, the rise would be the rise of spiritual Israel. Because we, Christians our spiritual Israel today. He said there'd be sadness on the part of not only Jesus, but also his mother. And soul searching by those who hear according to verse 35. Yea, a sword shall pierce through his own soul also. Thy own soul also, speaking in this case to Mary. That thy thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now think about it. Anna added her blessings. She was this elderly woman, the oldest woman mentioned in the New Testament. And it says, she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise to the Lord and spake to him of all that looked for the redemption of Israel. What's redemption? Redemption is buying something back. If you take your watch and take it to the pawn shop, you have a, a diamond encrusted Rolex watch and you give it to the pawn shop. And he looks at it and says, well, I'll give you so much money. But to get it back, you've got to pay interest. And if you don't pay it on time, I keep the watch. We all know how that works. We take the ticket that's given to us, and, and then we come back at the appointed time, and we pay the interest, and we get our precious possession back, although we've had to pay a price for it, haven't we? Didn't Jesus have to pay an awful price for our redemption? He shed his blood on the cross. You see, coming into this world was, was bad enough in some ways. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 that he did not consider it a thing uh, to be grasped, to empty himself and come down to earth and be one of us. Anna had it right. 
He was the one that was going to have the redemption of Israel and the redemption of all of us. For without Jesus Christ, spiritual Israel could never be redeemed. As Steve said a few moments ago and stole part of my lesson, <laughs> our world needs the consolation and redemption of Jesus. We need the cross. The birth of Christ was so that the cross could be established. <clears throat> Brother Cosmo, do you have to talk about the cross in a season of remembering his birth? Brethren, we don't do it out of hatred. We don't do it out of spite. We don't do it out of, well, we want to show the denomination a few things. No. We do it because it's what the Bible is all about. The Bible is about the birth leading to the death of Jesus. You see, Christ's birth was an indication that he was going to have to die, just as we have to be born again. We know that's true. Now, I don't mind the phrase, Happy Birthday, Jesus. I've seen it. If you go down in Hendersonville on the Trinity Broadcasting Network, they've got a big sign down there, Happy Birthday, Jesus. Well, it's a nice sentiment, culturally speaking. Because we like to say happy birthday to our children. But how much more? Jesus wishes us to celebrate our birth, the new birth. And isn't he happy? The Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice when one sinner is converted. So think of the, the joy this morning over someone that, that becomes a new Christian. They're born again. And Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. He said, except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he did not enter the kingdom of heaven. I didn't put that there. I'm not trying to blow out the candle on the birthday cake and say, oh, he's a party pooper. Not at all. I'm glad Jesus came. I'm glad to celebrate the fact that he came into this world. What a wonderful time. We sang some beautiful songs this morning. It came upon a midnight clear. Joy to the world. We sang before the Bible said, nothing wrong with that. We're thankful for it. But remember, it led to something more important. It led to talking about his death, his burial, and his resurrection, which we must emulate according to Romans chapter 6, verse 3 following. We must emulate his death, burial, and resurrection. Imitate it as we are born again. And that's why Jesus came into this world. Precious little baby, sad figure on the cross, all there. Now you know that gift of eternal life can have your name on it today. Some of you right now are wrapping your presents, putting them under the tree, and you're writing the name of your relative, aren't you? But you know your name needs to go on the best name tag of all, and that's the one called the gift of eternal life. Is your name written there? The Bible says those that are in the Lamb's book of life will be those that will be saved. When the books are open, one of them will be that book that has your name in it. Is it there now? Have you been given this gift? The gift that you can give to yourself through Jesus Christ. Yes, he gave the gift originally through his grace. But you have to respond to it. A million dollar check does no good for a person who doesn't take it to the bank and cash it. The consolation of Israel can be yours today. As you come to him, as you're born again. I'm glad Jesus came to this world. I'm glad Simeon and Anna praised him and, and talked about how wonderful he was. I'm glad that child was in that manger some 2,000 years ago. Thank God for it. But even more, thank God that he showed us that, that we too must be born again. Have you come to Jesus yet? Are you a New Testament Christian? If not, won't you do so right now while we say it and while we say it. Why do you wait? Wait.